As civilians began to trickle home from the celebration for the night, more and more black-clad Antifa members began congregating in the square. As they did, a truck began circling the square with MAGA slogans on it. He had a Donald Trump flag, an American flag, and even a thin blue line flag. As it circled, the demonstrators rushed it and started to hurl abuse at the men inside. One of the Antifa actually ripped the American flag off of the car and someone hurled a full can of beer at it. And then a little bit later, the thin blue line flag was also stolen. Hey everyone, it's Anna Slats for Rebel News, and I am in Portland, Oregon, the protest capital of the world. Guys, it has been a crazy four days for me. I came down to the United States the day after the election to try and catch some of the reactions and demonstrations to what was happening with the presidential race. I started my journey in Washington, and then I went on to New York City, Philadelphia, and now I'm in Portland. You can watch my other video to see what went down during my earlier travels, but I wanted to recap what happened in Philadelphia and yesterday here in Portland for you guys. I arrived to Philadelphia just before the election was called by the mainstream media as being a Biden win. There were demonstrations taking place outside of the Pennsylvania Convention Center where the ballots were actually being counted. There were dueling protests. There were pro-Trump and anti-Trump demonstrators in the same spot, separated by a wall of police and a metal gate. And I have to say, the Philadelphia PD did an amazing job of keeping everything calm. They were professional, courteous, and actively told me that they wanted to make sure everyone had a space to express their right to protest. I thought that was fantastic. While I was there, I had the chance to talk to a few pro-Trump demonstrators and listen to their perspective on the election. That's where I met Jeremy, who actually came to speak to me just as he was getting out of the area. He was actually worried that if the protests turned violent, he would be a target. Jeremy told me that he absolutely believes corruption and fraud happen with respect to the ballot counting process. He pointed to the crowd of anti-Trump demonstrators and asked how so many people were coming out now when Joe Biden had very small crowds at all of his actual rallies. Listen to what he had to say. We all know that on Monday, Joe Biden couldn't fill up a bathtub. We, had, we, we were witnessing uh, rallies where the minimum was, say, 30,000 people. At one point, they had 57,000 people, I believe I saw. Trump was bringing out the masses. They had uh, rallies in Lithuania, uh, Nigeria, uh, England, Beverly Hills, California, all over the world. Now, on Wednesday, we're supposed to believe that Joe Biden, who couldn't come out of his basement, who couldn't say a, a, a complete sentence, now garnered all the votes from its nonsense. The Democrats are in there cheating. This is Philadelphia, it is a very corrupt city. The Democrats are in there doing what they do. They begged for this, um, for this mail-in vote, vote nonsense, and now it's coming back to bite them. Because now when they have to count the votes, they're gonna to have to show and prove that these votes are real. These people out there protesting on the left, they are uh, uh, savagely misguided. They don't know what they're fighting for. They're out here, they, one minute they have their mask on, the next minute they don't social distance, the next minute they, they just make it up as they go along. It is the biggest joke. They, they, they're so serious, they brought a DJ. That's not, come on, that says it all. It's a party, it's a joke to them. The non-working crew. I also met Maria, a recent immigrant to America who said Joe Biden was backed by big money, and that she was convinced that inside the convention center, they were actively changing ballots from Republican to Democrat. I am first generation American. I came from former USSR, where we did not have a voice. The election was runaway election. This is actually what's going on in America right now. The election has been hijacked by high tech, by Democrats, the hard left. We are standing here and voting for freedom, voting for our voices and our cho choices be counted and be heard. This election has become a runaway election. The election has been hijacked. There are du duplicate ballots. The ballots were flipped from Republican to Democrat to give Biden a lead. Thanks to the great effort of the Philly PD, 
protest remained very positive and very safe the entire night. The only time anything spicy happened was when a pro-Trump and anti-Trump demonstrator started exchanging some rough language and one of the pro-Trump demonstrators actually rushed the police line and challenged the anti-Trump demonstrator to a street fight. But he was safely escorted back into the pro-Trump area by police before anything could happen. The pro-Trump demonstrators were also allowed to leave very safely under the watchful eye of the police officers. Now that was Philadelphia, but yesterday I hopped on a plane and came to Portland to follow more election-related protests. By the time I got off the plane from Philly, Biden had actually been declared the winner of the electoral race by AP and NBC. So by the time I arrived to Portland, I was arriving to a number of pro-Biden celebration rallies taking place in the city. At first, I was kind of shocked. There was actually a DJ heading the celebration in Pioneer Courthouse Square that was thanking the Portland PD, telling people that police were necessary, and even inviting people to work with their fellow Americans despite disagreements on politics. All very good things, and for a second, I actually wondered if I had accidentally ended up in the wrong city. Yo, we gonna celebrate. I ain't gonna preach all night. I ain't gonna do y'all like that. But I just gotta let y'all know where we coming from. You know what I'm saying? This is nonviolent. We are in the Pioneer Square. We don't control what goes on around the corner outside. You are downtown Portland. You need to conduct yourself appropriately. You need to maintain your safety and your safety awareness at all times and have a good time. The police department do got their eyes on us and we appreciate that because, yeah, we, we need them down here. You know what I mean? So, for that, come on, Deli, I'm done, man. Unfortunately, that positive vibe very rapidly deteriorated. As civilians began to trickle home from the celebration for the night, more and more black clad Antifa members began congregating in the square. As they did, a truck began circling the square with MAGA slogans on it. He had a Donald Trump flag, an American flag, and even a thin blue line flag. As it circled, the demonstrators rushed it and started to hurl abuse at the men inside. One of the Antifa actually ripped the American flag off of the car and someone hurled a full can of beer at it. And then a little bit later, the thin blue line flag was also stolen. A lot of the Antifa that were in the square actually had weapons. There were baseball bats, batons, clubs, and two strange activists who were from some sort of autonomous Portland group had guns. While I was getting a little bit nervous, the Antifa crowd began to trickle away at around 11 p.m. Or so I thought. The moment I got back to my hotel to order some dinner, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office tweeted out that a demonstration had began at the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Building in South Portland. So I rushed over, and sure enough, there were about 50 Black Bloc members organized outside of the ICE facility with loudspeakers. At this point, they were now demonstrating against the seizure of migrant children, so it had sort of switched in its uh, purpose. At first, things were okay. No property was being destroyed. No one was being hurt. It was just a lot of very loud people with megaphones. But as the ICE facility began to announce that arrests would be made unless people left the property, that's when things got hairy. The Black Bloc members began crowding near a gate where some of the ICE officers were guarding the entrance. And as they did, about 50 ICE officers rushed onto the street and began making arrests. In total, three people were arrested. Some pepper balls were issued and I had to run at one point to make sure I wasn't caught in the middle of it all and ended up back in lockup. The ICE officers successfully dispersed the crowd by forcing them down parallel streets, and the night came to a close. I was actually the only media there, believe it or not, and Tifa had their press person, but there was no one else but Revel actually covering what happened at the ICE facility last night. Today, I'm heading home to Canada, where I hope to pursue a radical imam who has been preaching hate towards minorities and praising terrorists in Victoria, BC. A teacher in France chose to show those insulting cartoons to his class at a school. Then about a week ago, it is said, and I repeat, it is said, that a young Muslim man confronted this cursed individual he confronted this evil spirited man. He confronted this filthy excuse of a human being on the street and he beheaded him. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed my reports and efforts in the US.
If you appreciate me bringing you the stories from on the ground here, please visit rebel2020.com to pitch in a small donation towards my modest travel costs. Thanks, guys. While I'm here in Washington, I'm going to try and bring you some reports on what's going on. But I'm also going to try and live stream to our Twitter and to our YouTube uh, if something happens that I want you to see. I'm going to try to bring you the news as it comes in. But I have no idea when or what that might be. Things are so up in the air right now, much like the presidential election itself. So what I would recommend doing is subscribing to us on YouTube and hitting the notification icon so that you can be alerted whenever I am going live.